said I'ma crush it. Okay, so uh, projection booth. And uh, normally doors would be closed. And actually you can see um, there's a set of double doors here. And the reason is you can see a red bulb here too. Um, during projection, uh, this door would be closed and this door would be closed. If the projectionists had to leave, they would come through here, shut the door, uh, and then exit so that people sitting in the balcony wouldn't see light from the projection booth and wouldn't hear uh, the whir of the projector. So we have a few different things here um, to show you. This is a 35 millimeter actually uh, also 70 millimeter projector. Um, it's an old, uh, um, is it a century uh, pro projector? Yep. Um, and this was installed in the theater in 2006 for the reopening in 2007. Um, a platter system, essentially there are two, uh, historically a projection system, and in fact you can see, um, you can see one, two, three, uh, four um, uh, portals, uh, windows that would look into the theater. Two of those, this one and that one, would have been two projectors, uh, something called side-by-side -side projection or changeover projection. So you would build up uh, these big 2,000-foot reels, and they would be here. Uh, and, you know, if you're, if you're old enough, you would remember seeing... Um, at various points throughout the film, you would see these little round white circles in the upper right hand corner. You would see a quick flash, uh, and then approximately 10 seconds later, you would see another quick flash, and then sometimes there would be a jump, and that's when the reels were changing over. So the projectionist would, uh, when he sees the first set of uh, cue marks, he would start the other projector, and then when he saw the second uh, set of cue marks, he would stomp on a switch, and that would switch uh, over to the other projector. And then he would work on threading up this one to change it back over here. So historically, that's what projection looked like um, up until 1950 uh, or so. Uh, film stocks were made um, on something called nitrocellulose um, uh, film stock. It was flammable, um, and there were, you know, historically there were a number of uh, theater fires, uh, you know, from 1900 to 1950. Um, you you will actually you'll see that these are these are hooked up here. These are heavy metal plates, and so if there was a fire in the booth, there were actually these big cartridges that would try to contain it. But um, uh, if sensors read that there was a fire, these would automatically slide down, um, hopefully containing the fire to the booth itself. Um, yeah, so people had to be you know quite careful of. Uh, uh, um, smoking around films, and uh, I think they did it, but <laughs> uh, anyway, so uh, come 19, I don't know when uh, it started to change for theaters. I think in the late 80s is when it changed at the Hollywood, um, a platter system would have been reintroduced, and this basically means that you would build up um, all of the reels onto one reel and then put it on a great big platter and then you thread it through these loops over here, over to the projector, uh, and it means that uh, you, you, push, you push a button and there goes the film. Uh, so some people thought about that as you know, sort of the death of, uh, of projection <laughs> at that point, but um, uh, that's, what, that's what we have, a platter system. Um, we, don't, we don't run film that much because there are, uh, are costs involved. We don't have a uh, on staff projectionists because of the expenses. Um, I have a little bit of pr projection experience, but not enough to feel confident about um, uh, running it. So we occasionally will run it. Uh, I mentioned our March 2nd uh, event, and I scoured the earth for four months to find a, an existing 35 millimeter print that you could actually platter or cut a uh, splice up into, into one print. So we'll be showing that. We did a test last week, it looked great. System works great. Um, otherwise, we have this Panasonic machine, uh, digital projector, an early digital projector. It's probably eight, nine, ten years old now. Um, uh, at the, I think at the time that it was purchased, it was thirty-five thousand uh, dollars. We are able to run uh, DVD 
and Blu-ray uh, off of it. Um, with my background in film, um, I'm not particularly interested in watching things on the screen on DVD and Blu-ray unless it was born on video. Uh, then I'm fine with it. But uh, uh, it purely comes down to uh, economics. Um, if we can show it on film, we will. If we can't, we show it on DVD and Blu-ray until we can uh, install our new digital projector. So that's where, uh, and this is our current video and sound rack. Um, this projector has been aging. Uh, we've actually had it into a repair, uh, a repair shop a couple times, uh, usually $1,000 a time. And um, uh, it's about, it hasn't been well taken care of, I don't think, and it's time to retire it. Uh, so we do need that digital projector, and uh, it can't run DCP. It's not it's um, not DCI compliant, which this was this initiative, Digital Cinema Initiative, to uh, basically create a a standard um, to to be able to run DCP Digital Cinema Package. Uh, there were early efforts to to uh, uh, to be able to show uh, DCP that weren't DCI compliant, and so some earlier projectors are out there. Um, people who were ahead of the game made the purchase and then found out within a year or two that they actually were too ahead of the game and couldn't, um, couldn't actually run the new standard. So um, kind of sad, but, uh, but true. Uh, so this is where the new digital projector will go. Um, I think for the long term, um, the platter system, is considered non-archival um, because you have to uh, cut and make cuts at the heads and the tail of the film in order to build it up, um, in order to splice it together to see it uh, how you see it there. So that means that archives, a lot of private collectors, um, uh, and some distributors won't lend you uh, prints that you're going to put on a platter um, because they don't want you to cut into the film. The moment you start cutting into the film, you start losing frames, you start scratching it. Um, and so there's some theaters are, um, are trying to keep 35 millimeter film, Blu-ray, DVD, DCP, like basic, ba basically be able to show all formats. And that's what we're doing here uh, for the long term. We want to remove the platter system. Uh, and bring back another 35 millimeter projector and be able to do side-by-side -side projection so we can have access to prints from, to be able to show classic uh, films from some of the archives. There was an article uh, in The Atlantic a few days ago uh, that we shared with uh, our patrons on Facebook. Only a, a small percentage of um, classic films uh, in holdings uh, at various um, film studio archives have been transferred to DCP. So, and they're increasingly telling you, you can't show them on DVD or Blu-ray. And uh, it's, presenting a, it's presenting a problem. And of course, a lot of theaters are just converting straight over to DCP and junking their 35 millimeter projectors. So does that mean you can't show 99% of, of the classic films um, that have been made? Uh, could very well be. So our idea is to, uh, again, it's not a silver bullet approach. Be able to sh uh, keep as many different formats as we can here, and uh, uh, have the option of, of, you know, if there's a title we we want and want to show, and it's only available on 35 millimeter, we want to be able to do that. If it's only available on DCP, we want to be able to do that. So that's sort of the long term thinking for the booth. Short term, we need this digital projector badly. Um, we've lost Rocky Horror Picture Show. Um, some of the big studio films, Disney. Uh, won't allow us to show anything on DVD or Blu-ray. Uh, it's harder to get film prints now. Um, so the writing is on the wall. Um, I think within 2013 we need to install this projector or we're going to be in real trouble. Um, yeah, I mean, this was an old... Um, this was kind of something that I saw the other day. This was an old film wind room. Uh, so that would have... Actually, you can see the bench over there in which that's what you build up um, prints onto the big reels for the platter system. Um, I think historically the film wind was in here, and the reason I know that is because if you look very closely in the tiles in the ceiling, you can see little shards of 
of 35 millimeter film. And um, so someone would have been winding in here, uh, hit a section that had damage on the sprockets. And when that happens, film can fly and those get stuck up in the ceiling. Um, so obviously we need a little bit of renovation in this space. Um, 